Baldi, what's your view? How AI will help us to adapt to different ages? Because we all learn as adults, not only, only as children, right? To different styles, we mentioned that, and to different, basically, personalities even, right? We kind of touched on it, but I just want to hear about, you know, about adaptability and flexibility. Now, I agree with what Dave said before. It it's, it's, has to become part of our lives. It has to become habitual. We should all learn it and engage with the tools because it can bring a lot of benefits. You know, they can help us become more efficient. They could automize certain things, but it will be part of everything we do. Like nowadays, what do most people do when they wake up? They grab their phone. Well, then first of all, the alarm probably goes off on that device. And then they open their email or Instagram or the news. You know, the first thing we do is check something online, whatever that may be for us. And I believe that's the same going to be with AI. We're going to not just write our emails from scratch. AI is going to help us. When we want to learn something anytime, anywhere, we could use our AI teacher. We need to do something in our finance world. Well, we'll use an AI. And that will all be not necessarily an individual tool in itself, but AI is already and will only become more and more embedded within a lot of other softwares that we're already using. And sometimes you may not even know that we use AI, but we're already using it in many different applications. And that's only going to grow. And the, the earlier, I think, everybody, whether they're young or old, whatever profession they may have, the earlier, the sooner they start adapting to this and sort of upskilling themselves a little bit in terms of what does this mean? How can it affect me? What could I learn? I think everything will just slowly fall into pieces. Uh, at the same time, right? Let me play a little bit, right? The devil advocate here, because again, no one is really uh, what is ignorant of this topic. Again, it's touching everyone, right? Everyone, you know, who think about adults, kids, elderly, everyone, right? All, all, all of us. So, in that sense, um, kids who will be growing up, you know, in this new world, that's happening. That's happening, right? Where is this? Uh, kind of not not the line but you know where this human interaction in AI, in AI you know because at young age I'm not a psychologist I'm just a mother and my kids grown up a long time ago but point is that I do feel for kids if they are attached too much you know to those tools and that's happening parents complain about it I have my own answer how to deal deal with this right but uh, from from AI from technology perspective from professional and practitioners perspective right what the world do you envision in terms of kids who know the difference, kids who can interact in the real world, kids who need that human attention and human love, despite everything that's available, you know, to them on their uh, iPads, on their uh, right phones and everywhere. So you, you know where I'm getting with this. Dev? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll take this question. Um, we've obviously been uh, very optimistic and energetic till now, uh, but we also have to be absolutely honest with the listeners. So, uh, you know, too much screen time, as we know, and uh, truthfully so, is not good for anybody. It's just not for children. It's not good for adults. <laughs> you know, it's not good for anybody. Uh, and unfortunately, this is a larger piece. It's not to do with AI. This is a larger piece on where society is going. So it's just not your iPhone, you know, your phones and tablets anymore. Today, if you see more and more, you go to supermarkets, uh, you go even into your cabs, into your cars, into almost any experience, you have a screen time experience. Now, that has an overall effect on people. That has an overall effect on children. And I think it is up to the parents to really come in and determine uh, how much screen time they want to give uh, to a child, how do they want to control that, etc. But I think each product should also come with its own checks and balances in this because uh, you should give the tools to the parents to be able to control this. And a number of tools do that. And I'll just give you one example how you can also use this positively. So we've been working on an early beta product called Teddy AI. Uh, recently. Uh, it's again for absolute children, right? It's from four years and above. It's a teddy bear study companion. So what's interesting here is A, parents get all of the reports. B, parents can obviously time it. Now these are traditional things. But C, the child plays with this AI companion, right? But before the child plays with this AI companion, the parents can already tell or rather prompt this AI companion what they should also do with their child. So, for instance, if the parent says, when you are playing with my child for the next half an hour, make sure you also practice the multiplications of two with them. 
So Teddy is playing with the child, you know, don't touch my belly and all of that. And then suddenly he says, okay, let's practice the multiplications of two. And the child practices the multiplications of two without knowing. So it's almost like when we were children, all of us used to watch the same Winnie the Pooh. But today, the child, each child can interact differently with Winnie the Pooh. And that interaction can be productive because the parent is doing that. So whilst there is a lot of, uh, you know, risks associated with screen time, the products themselves can also tailor to give maximum value and also to allow the parents to limit uh, whenever is it's best for their judgment. Beautiful. Paul D, do you have point of view? I'm sure you do. I, I, I totally agree with what Dave said. I think it's very important that we see how is screen time being used? What do we do when we're on the screen? And the, I also very much agree we should still have human to human interactions, whether those are, well, they can be online, like we are talking now, but uh, they can also be face to face. They should be face to face. We shouldn't only be, you know, stuck to the phone like this and, you know, not doing anything else or only to be on our iPads or any other devices we may own. However, having said that, I still think it's also these online devices can also be used to make interactions in the real world easier. A lot of people find it very scary to go and talk to a stranger, to you know, go to a job interview, <laughs> go to, I don't know, next tomorrow you have to give a presentation in class. Oh, wow, nerve wracking. So not everybody has someone they can help that can help them with their studies, whether it's a parent, a tutor, it might not be affordable, people may not have time, people may not have the subject expertise or knowledge to help, let's say their child or you know, a friend. So I think their AI teachers and other AI tools can become very helpful. And there, I would say screen time is extremely useful because if it can reduce you know, sort of the boundaries or the, if it can reduce the barriers that that person is facing and can overcome these challenges, and increasing their confidence then to maybe ask a question next time in class or practicing for that interview you have coming up or rehearsing the presentation a few times with, you know, an AI as a teacher. Probably that will lead to much more benefits also in terms of their self-esteem and their overall general well-being. And then I think it's a good time. So there needs to be balance as to when we spend time on the screen and how we spend time on the screen. And if we get that balance right, I think that, that we're sorted, but I don't think we're there yet.